not David Attenborough but welcome to another video today I'm going to be I've been waiting to do this for a little while now I'm gonna be wiring up some plug sockets via my inverter if you haven't seen already I've done a separate video for the inverter which I'll link in the description which is sort of wired into my main sort of electrical system already now I'll quickly show you what I'm gonna be using today and then I'll tell you why I've made those decisions. So I've got some 2.5 millimeter twin and earth cable. I've got three double plug sockets that also include two USB sockets on each as well. I've then got just some back boxes for each of those plug sockets. I've got a 13 amp household plug and then I've got a 16 amp RCBO that is already within its little consumer unit. Now in most homes, you'll have a fuse box which will have an RCD and then a variety of MCBs. Now an RCD, what that does is it detects sort of the incoming and outgoing current. And if it detects an anomaly, it switches off, basically to protect people. Whereas an MCB is like your stereotypical circuit breaker. Now, because I'm only gonna be having one output that's gonna to go to these three sockets, rather than have one RCD and one MCB, I've got what's called an RCBO which is basically the two combined into one little unit which I've got here so it's like they're slightly more expensive but this thing was someone sort of designed it specifically really for as you can see for camping the camper vans so it came with the housing the consume unit it came with the RCBO um, it's already got a little um, earthing sort of bus bar in here it came with an earth cable and it also came with a bolt to earth too so it's a 16 amp RCBO and essentially your uh, your earth cable comes in here and goes into the little bar here and then the other end goes to a grounding point and then your neutral and live go on the top there and that's obviously coming from the inverter and then the output goes out here and so you connect the earth again to this bar and then the neutral and live come out there and then that goes to your plug sockets obviously I'll show you wiring it up which will make more sense now I'm going to connect the three plug sockets in what's called a radial circuit so that literally just means if you look at the back here of this plug socket again i'll show you this in more detail when i'm doing it you've got a live neutral and earth so the cable will come in from the consumer unit and go into live neutral and earth and then another bit of cable will come out and then go into the next one and then into the next one so you just have a three sort of looks like in series i'll show you a little diagram now that i've whipped up on the computer just to show you how it looks. So that's really, a really, really simple circuit. Because you can't see the individual wires in each in each plug socket, but I will show you that as I'm doing it. Now, the last thing I wanted to mention is these, the backs of the plug sockets. I, they're the sort of typical size of 35 millimeter. Um, I managed to find some that are 25 millimeter, so they sit nicely in my cladding. 35 millimeter is a little bit too thick. Um, and they wouldn't have sat flush against the cladding once it's up. And speaking of cladding, the wall cladding still isn't there. I'm going to be doing that very soon. So what I'm going to do is just fasten these plug sockets in place where I want them to be. And then we'll clad around them, essentially. So, yes. Now, the first step is finding an earthing point for the consumer unit. And as I said, it comes with its own earthing cable. Now I did a bit of research online to see if I could share the same grounding point that I made for the negative bus bar for the 12 volt system. There were some conflicting things basically saying, oh yeah, it doesn't matter too much if they share it. There were some saying it should really be separate. So I thought um, just to err on the side of caution, I'll do a separate point. So what I've done, um, as you can see here, I've drilled a little hole and I've filed the paint off to get a good connection. And then, comes with a little bolt here that I'm going to screw in now and then I'll screw the other end to this earth wire. Right then, so you can see it's earth there and the earth cable goes up behind all this stuff and it goes up into the overhead cupboard which leads me on to the next point of where I'm going to position everything. Right, so as I said, earth cable comes up behind here it's up into this cupboard so at the moment I've got the uh, consume unit for the solar panels so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plonk my consume unit here 
so, which that will mean that it will come out of the back of the, I really need to tidy these wires up soon, and it will come out the back of the inverter, it will go under here, come up here, along with the earth cable, and then into the RCBA, like so. Now, as I said, I've got three plug sockets. So the first one, I'm either going to put here or here. That all depends on how much cable I've got. because I'm starting to feel like 10 meters isn't enough. And then I'm also going to put another one in here because I'm thinking of having a wall mounted TV that would need to be plugged in somewhere. And also I want to have a place where I can charge things discreetly. So if I'm out and I can just put pretend my laptop in here and have it charging, it won't be seen. And then the third point I'm going to have down here. Now, it's a general rule. I did a lot of research about this. It's a general rule that you shouldn't have runs of 12 volt cables or well, DC cables next to runs of AC cables. So you can see here where you've got, where I'm using this channel in the corner here for the lights or this channel here, that's all 12 volt. So I don't really want my twin and earth cable running alongside that. Some people say it doesn't really matter, but again, like the earthing point, I want to err on the side of caution and make sure I do it. The, the general rule apparently is there needs to be something, there needs to be something significantly parting them or they need to be five centimeters apart. The reason for this is in case there is a power surge and you've got AC and DC, so they could essentially, if there's a power surge, they could, they could cross. Now, apparently it doesn't matter if the wires just like intersect quickly somewhere. That doesn't matter too much, apparently. So with that in mind, I've had to be quite strategic as to where the cable is going to go. So if we start with my furthest away plug socket, which is going to be here in the corner of the kitchen, Cable's going to come up, up the back of this cupboard, along the back of the second one, and then into the second plug socket here. It's going to come out of that plug socket, and then down, see the side here, down here, underneath this bench, and then it's going to go into a plug socket here, and then I'm going to go over the top and just follow this bar on and into this cupboard and then into the RCBO. And then obviously out the bottom of the RCBO into the inverter. I hope that makes sense. To test it out, what I might do now is actually just feed the entire 10 meters now, the full length and just see if it reaches. So I thought I might have to order some more. Let's try that. Well, I never. Cable goes all the way up. Underneath. Across here. Up the top. Under there. Back up. Through the cupboards. And cut off. I magically have got enough cable. Incredible. What to do first then? So I think the first thing I'm going to do is from above, where I'm a plug socket. So here we go, look. I think a lot of people did this in school, I didn't. But you've got bloop. So blue wire goes in the bottom left, neutral. Earth goes up the top, and then live goes in at the right there. And then it's got a 13 amp fuse inside of it. So I've cut my cables like this. And then they just screw down.
And then to keep everything in place, it's got a little bracket. Boom. Key sounds. Keeps that all together. And then put the cap back on. Ta-da. Plug socket. And this just plugs in the back of the inverter. Put the hand in there. Like so. And then as I said, it's gonna go underneath up here. Just put it tight. Now next I'm gonna wire the other end of that cable that's gone up there into my RCBO. As I said before, I'm actually gonna do this this way around because the input goes in the top so now the bottom and the earth cable that I've grounded to the chassis also goes in the top so it makes sense to have it on the bottom here and then the cable coming out the top will go across the roof to my plug socket so the earth cable as I said that I've grounded to the vehicle chassis will it's just come in here and then just screw straight into this little bar here this bus bar the uh, twin and earth the neutral will go in here the live will go in one and then the earth cable will go and again into the bus bar. And then for the opposite end, it's literally just the opposite. Again, neutral, live, earth. Shimpers. Now it's going to be a little bit hard to film in that cupboard. So I'm just going to wire it up and then show you afterwards. Okay. Right then. There you go, look. So neutral live and earth on the top neutral live and earth on the bottom and then the third earth cable which just earths the whole thing all in that little bar here so i'm just going to pop the cover back on and then we'll do the plug sockets there we go obviously it's upside down inside here if i can open it there you go it's upside down but should work fine. Right. It's just started to rain again. It's getting dark. First time I've been working in the van with the lights on. Yeah. Right, so trying to ignore the sound of the rain. So the plug socket, as I said before, live, neutral, earth. So you put the incoming wire in one end and then you just put the outcoming wire in the same, same sockets. And it's literally as simple as that. So let's do the first one, which is going to go here, on my bed. Mm -hmm. I should probably mention at this point, to cut the cable, I'm using these heavy duty cable cutters. To strip the Arctic Blue from the outside, I'm using these strimmers. Um, I've got it set very, very thin because obviously it very slightly, so it doesn't cut through the wire, but um, it just helps separate that and then to clip each individual wire, I've got these cable strimmers. So it's going to go in the back. There's two holes. So it's going to go in the back like that. And then, as I said, just in there, relative holes. And then that just screws in place. I'm just going to screw it lightly for now because obviously I need to do the other end. In fact, Good point, Ian. I'll do, I'm going to do the other end first because it's not suspended, is it? Okay. Right, so that goes in this end. This goes in this end. Now we can do both at the same time. So both lives in the live one. Right then, so neutrals. Right, so it's all wired up. So as I said, look, live, live, neutral, neutral, and then Earth's actually got two separate points you can use. You could go in the same one if you wanted, but I've just chose separate ones. So now I just need to screw it to the back. I forgot to mention earlier, these also have, these backs also have these little wings. So as you tighten it, it grips onto um, and sandwiches between what sort of the cladding around it, which is really cool. I think it's meant for plasterboard, but um, it should work for the cladding as well. It comes with screws in the pack, so I'll just do that now. There we go. 
So I'm just going to sort of duct tape this in position now for now. Um, and we're doing cladding soon, so then I'll be able to clad around it and fix it into place properly. Uh, right, so the next one I'm going to wire up is the one in here. I'm going to do it in the exact same way as before, and it's really hard to film in here, so I'll just show you the end product afterwards. There we go. Second one done. So now, we just need to do the last one over here, and luckily, I only need to do just that end into here. That's where the circuit ends. Not the circuit ends, but that's the, the furthest it goes. There we go. And that one's going to sit there like that. Here's a funny story. When I was doing the carpeting of the door, I took off that side panel there. That's I took off the door handle, sorry. And when I put it back on again, it doesn't work. And it's on my long to-do list to fix it. And it started raining when I was doing these plug sockets, so I closed the door and now I'm locked inside. So I've had to call my sister to come unlock the door to get me out. Luckily I've got this plug socket here to keep me company. God knows how long I'll be here. Probably not five minutes to be honest. Right then, let's test this out. Here is my iPhone. And it's plugged into the socket. So, let's turn on my inverter. Step one, complete. Let's turn the inverter on. Complete. There's a green light on. So cable goes up here, into here, and then let's, it's hard with one hand. Let's turn this on. So that's on. That goes over the roof and down here the moment of truth so when I press this my iPhone should light up right <laughs> yes. that's almost as satisfying as the lights quality might go test all the other ones as well cool yeah so as always I hope you found that video really helpful all the parts and stuff are linked in the description below as well as previous videos and things if you like the video give us a thumbs up and if you want to see some more subscribe and all that see you later